Good morning, everyone. Time for a walkabout. Put them down in the pen. And up you go. They're usually very happy with being, they're always very happy about being on the grass. Oh, and a big puddle of water. Look at that. They'll get right at it, being geese. Goose TV. Geese are naturally herbivores. They're not grain eaters, although they will eat grain, but naturally they're definitely grazers. They like their vegetation, they like the grass. We put them on the shortest grass we have because they're their shorter grass is a smaller stem, easier for them to, to pull it off. And they're off. I love having birds around. Not just wild birds, but domestic ones. It is fun. It's nice to see. They do take extra work, and that's why we really haven't had any for a few years. It's extra work, but this year we're having to do so much filming for the master class that we needed to get some birds. So we got getting a whole collection of birds this year. We're getting the ducklings coming in this week and chickens will be at the end of the month. Turkeys, chickens, pheasant, quail. We're getting everything except guinea fowl. Bo is here. She's happy to wake up. She's eager and ready. You're, hey, Bo, you ready for a walk? You ready for your walk? Let's go. The feeders have been busy. The birds have been amazing. We've got a whole lot of things going this spring. The bird baths, this is a luxury bird bath, marble bird bath, old sinks. Got that free. Uh, yeah, the trees are actually, they're, they're actually starting to drop. Look at that, petal fall. So it's just so nice to walk the orchard when we're in this mode of bloom. I love bloom time. I try to stay here as much as I can because it's just so pleasant. We've had an amazing string of weather Oh, it's the squirrel running up there, making the, the waterfall. Rained last night, finally. We've had a really dry spring, like really dry for us. We've had to put the irrigation on extra because things have been looking really dry, but boy, that bit of rain. Thankfully, we've had, uh, yeah, this is pretty thin. We can see where we went through with the, chipper the flail mower so that was great if you saw that video we got some of our old trees that have died have gotten killed this one was actually the dog that killed it because she was after a chipmunk and so she peeled the bark off everything but thankfully this one is coming back right from the base and so we're leaving this. This is too much growth really, but I'm not pruning this. It will send out some branches and that will be the replacement, a Spartan apple. Some of the trees this year are not gonna bloom at all or very little. Things like this pear trees, they produce so much, some of them last year that they're actually taking a break. So they do that. If they produce too heavy of a crop one year, they may not have any the next year. But look at that, isn't that beautiful? The bees, uh, the bees should be out. It's 15 degrees, but it's wet. It's early and it's wet, so. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Weather has been crazy. Literally last week we had our first bloom and it was our plum cot. That was the first bloom and We've had over 30 degree weather, which is in the 80s. And so we actually had such fast progress. The, the, the succession of blooms has happened so fast. 
look at that look at that that uh, yeah it's been such a quick succession of blooming that we had the cherries were early and some of them are are well they're actually most of them are finished these are Juliet uh, SK cherries there's and usually we don't get cherries blooming at the same time as some of the apple but this year it's so compressed basically the cherries are saying hey hey come see me the bees have been doing overtime with this heat and we don't have any honeybees anymore we don't want to have honeybees there's been so many native bees and we have so many that we really don't want to have honeybees because they out they they just over exaggerate uh, the crop that we usually have so you see look at these pear trees nothing nothing no blooms oh these are actually finished already these pear yeah so blooming has been so compressed those of you who are in europe hey and a shout out to everyone who's a new subscriber you say what is this walkabout well, the people who are regular viewers of the channel, really, a lot of people really like these walkabouts just to get a chance to see what's going on, see the orchard as it is. And so, uh, yeah, and a shout out to everyone who's a new subscriber. Springtime is the busiest time for channel growth. We, the channel grows really well in the spring. It makes sense. People are waking up to gardening and farming and and the uh, even homesteaders so a lot of people get interested and i know by the response from nurseries that we haven't had so much interest in fruit trees in my whole career it's been crazy covid as i said nothing has bad sides only and the positive side of COVID is a lot of people have woken up to the need to get some of their food produced. And so fruit trees have been a very important part of it. And yeah, so that's, that's woken people up a lot. Look at this rhubarb growing under here. Rhubarb under fruit trees, a great combination. Those of you are planting trios, you don't know what trios are. Go check that out. Those killdeer up there. And talking about birds, I can't, I'm still pumped. We had Global Big Bird Day two days ago. We hit it hard. We started from four in the morning. We were actually birding already by four in the morning and and we went till nine at night. And for the first time ever, I've been able to get uh, just over a hundred species in a day, which is pretty incredible for our area. I birded with Stefano Iannero, go see his channel. He's been working on a wildlife pond and he is doing wildlife surveys, working in that. And so his ears are sharp. We picked up species. There was no way we would have got if it wasn't for his really you know sharpened ear that all he'd hear is a little end of a song and he knew what it was so that helped me helps to work as a team and it helps to focus because we were so focused for a whole day on uh, on birds that it was it was great it was relaxing to to really focus on something else we've been very focused with the farm especially on the master class uh, we've been filming like crazy nowadays. We've had, we're filming over 3,000 clips. So those of you who say, what's this master class? Well, it's going to be basically my life's work about the orchard. And it's going to compile everything. If you like the film, the Permaculture Orchard Beyond Organic, well, that was basically an introduction it was the film plus 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 so it's updates everything you learned it's taking that information and going deeper because many times the film we just kind of touched on it and it's a collection of courses 
that make up the master class. So, oh, look at this spider web right across the path here. See that? It's amazing when you get this. It was very foggy this morning and the fog droplets actually gather on the, I can't focus on that, gather on the spider webs, but let's just duck because that spider worked hard to produce that web. So yeah, like I say, Blooms has been amazing. Sorry, I'm bouncing around. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. This is an amazing time of year. Birds are out. The blooms are out. That's fantastic. The weather, well, you know what? Weather, we all talk about it, but there's not much we can do about it. It is what it is. Um, Mathieu has really been invaluable at the farm lately. He's our, our apprentice here. And uh, yeah, so we did things like yeah, you'll see that in the master class, but things like layering shrubs, you know, he layered these shrubs. So we put the branch down, put a rock over it on, this is black currant, and put some material around it. And that will, there'll be roots underneath there in uh, maybe even just a few weeks, depending on the weather, but certainly by fall time. So that's one of our easiest ways. We do cuttings, we do layering and that one moved. <clears throat> See this branch? Oh no, there's two of them. That's why. That's why, that's why. So we could even do two layers here. Two branches that will get rooted. And that's what we do. Get the plants going. He's been working on a nursery because we have so much demand for people wanting plants. I want this, you have this, you have this. And we don't, we haven't been selling plants. Uh, so he's been he's been putting in a nursery if you're interested It won't be available until mostly Mostly next year as we decided, you know what we just have to supply some of these plants um, Yeah, so we're gonna have a, quite a collection. I'll go show you that in a bit This is uh, some of our Somerset grape so one of the parts so trios we put nitrogen fixer and here's a plum and a tree missing so that was probably a pear that died out but that's a trio nitrogen fruit fruit here and under the nitrogen fixers we put shrubs so we'll have here's a gooseberry there's a rhubarb and we put perennials not many perennials in this section actually there's some oregano, but other than that, there's not a whole lot right here. And then we put climbers at the base of the nitrogen fixer. So here's nitrogen uh, honey locust, and we put grapes to grow. And this one has grown nicely. See, we train the branches down. You'll see that pruning training. And we prune, uh, train these branches downwards so that the grape can really climb. So the grape goes up and look, it's all the way up there now and it will go higher. So that's just diversifying the crop. That's diversifying. Here we have some uh, Egyptian onions and there some bulbs we put in last year when there was bulb time. Ah, everywhere I look, I see contributions from other people like Mathieu did a big round last year so all these little um, shoots of onions he did last year he put in a uh, probably a, probably at least a thousand oh yeah more than that uh, bulbs there's some time what time is it it's time 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 and oregano Oh, look at that look at that that's neat when you get the petal rain look isn't that neat those of you who go I don't know this stuff I don't hey I'll tell you there's not a lot that's more relaxing and not just this time of year there's not a lot that's more relaxing than to have you don't have to have this much look at you can even see where I walked See the path from the dew? Isn't that neat? That's part of observation. So there's not a lot you can have 
that it's going to give you more relaxation than having some fruit trees, having a place you could just walk. It doesn't have to be this large, and this isn't really large. There's going to be people having a lot bigger orchards than this. Mark my word. I mean, it's coming. And uh, I'm so glad to hear that people have started. I get notices and emails and messages all the time. We got started. We planted our trees this spring. We planted our trees last fall. We got an orchard going. And that's, to me, that's the most gratifying. Knowing that other people will start to experience things like this. And I mean, one of the reasons I started doing this was that I realized we need to be able to produce our fruit crops in a way that is just really attractive to wildlife. That was my original goal. Which row am I going to walk down? This is more apples, choke cherries. There the cherries are blooming. Uh, you know, that's these rows. We haven't pruned access. So some of them are looking pretty thick. I mean, that's that's almost a canopy down there. Here too, we get petal fall. Look at that, all the petals. This is a Canada plum, huge producer, these plums. Also a huge sucker, I mean, they sucker. You want Canada plums, I mean, this thing will produce babies and babies and here in the next row this is one of the babies already blooming suckers oh bluebirds are out you hear that there he is it's right up there actually that's kind of a legacy of a a bird group called bird protection quebec used to be called province of Quebec Society for the Protection of Birds. They funded our first series of nest boxes. I proposed to them because I had seen a bluebird in the area and I said, hey, you know what? Orchards have traditionally been one of the richest places for bluebirds. And I said, would you be willing to fund our project to put up some nest boxes? And they said, yes. And they provided funds. We, I think we bought 25 nest boxes that year. And that was a great start. Now we're up to 300 nest boxes. I mean, there's nest boxes everywhere, even some where the posts are down. But there's nest boxes everywhere. Finally reached the point where they're not all full. And that's what you want. You want to reach the point where you have extra nest boxes because some nest boxes will actually attract wasps. Some will have, and a lot of these have chipmunks in them. Uh, some will hold bumblebees, and I let chipmunks net use. I mean, I let everything use them. And one of the reasons is, if chipmunks are using them, then they, the material they use to make their nest, is the favorite material for bumblebees. And then we get bumblebees using it. Look at this, the spider web in the dew of the morning. Pink bud? No, that's advanced pink. They're actually first bloom and a lot of you really like that video uh, what was it four reasons why your fruit tree isn't producing if you've made it this far and you like that video or you watch that video there's another one with five more reasons but in there I do point out the, the idea of king blossoms so here's one I'm looking for it here's one that's king bloom so see that middle bloom and then there's a there's a whirl so see like this one the middle flower and then there's one two three four five around it so it's six flowers in total so that one the king bloom they're called the king is open so that's the first bloom usually there's a there's a few days between that one and the next ones and that's just the way the tree basically tries to guarantee that it doesn't lose a year because if something happens look at that isn't that neat i mean ah oh, sorry i'm bouncing i'm just 
I'm excited because there's just so much to see and look at right now, especially after this rain. Yeah, so the King Bloom guarantees that you'll get a crop of some sort, even if we do get a frost. And I mean, we've been far from a frost. The heat has been pretty intense. Just to show you that I'm not always getting done what needs to be done. And just as a, maybe a, what would I say? To make you realize that, you know what? It's okay to have a time in the spring that you feel overwhelmed. If you've got a project like this, I can guarantee you there's times and there's been several times where you just you just feel overwhelmed because there's so much to do in the spring and our springs are compressed. I mean, literally two weeks ago we had snow and this is where it is. We had the start of spring, then we had snow and that put a damper on everything for a week and then pow two weeks later this is what we are and i know when i travel in europe i, I think gosh you, like you don't have a winter oh yeah it's winter well i consider winter with a whole lot of snow but you have a season that goes on and on and on and on <sighs> so we don't and it's compressed and that makes that there's so much to do in a short time some of you can note the time code, what time in this video we're at here. And I'm not going to tell you what this is, but some of you can write it down. They just finished blooming. They produce blue berries. And to help you, so you say, no, it's not blueberries. It's another one. Those of you who are from the West, you'll know right away. <clears throat> goldfinch getting back to birds so much of our bird watching nowadays is by ear and if you don't have the app um, eBird to keep track of your birds or the bird app Merlin to help you identify both put out by Cornell and kudos to that group They've put out amazing apps, really for research purposes originally, but it's been expanded and they are incredible tools, incredible. If you don't know it, Merlin is like the Shazam for birds, especially their sound ID. You could literally, if I turned it on now, it would start identifying all the birds. So, oh, I hear bird, blue bird, house wrens. Tree swallows, eastern kingbird, one of the woodpeckers just called quickly. You see, they're going off. There's several going on often at the same time. And so it'll help you identify your birds by sound and then you'll go, oh, that's what it is. So first you hear it, then you can go towards it to see what is that. And the birds have started to nest. Ooh, another spider web. The birds have started to nest. They've been mating. Yesterday we got a little, we got a clip that we don't often get of the tree swallows taking feathers. And they didn't come right in my hand this time, but they, they take it just as soon as I let it go. And it's so neat. It's just so neat. We have duck feathers that we keep from when we raise ducks. And I always say it's kind of like their wedding ring. Uh, they'll, they, that's, that's sure that that pair is together. And it's sure that that's the nest box they're going to use. Our kiwis, look at that. This is one of the, the biggest one. If we have a frost, then it's still possible. Not as likely now, but certainly possible. Last year we did uh, this kiwi. This one may not frost, certainly not that high. So the lower branches or the lower leaves may frost. Oh, I wish you could smell this. And I, I think of it in the master class. One of the courses is observation. And 
even if you don't want to buy the whole master class just getting the one on observation i tell you it will it will raise your skills and even i still practice it i'll practice just smelling i'll practice listening i mean that uh great uh, big global big day for birds was a great practice run for hearing i mean my hearing i was dreaming bird calls during the night because i focused so intently for so long that you literally raise your brain's ability to just pick up on sounds and it's an important it's important to hear for observation it's such an important part and one of them is smell and like literally when i'm walking through these sections with a little woody it, you could just it the smell is different it smells like the woods oh, with this moisture Bo is out somewhere smelling all right look at look at the can you see that i hope you can all the spider webs you see out there listen if you don't have a load of spider webs something is wrong something's wrong because you should have spiders and we were talking about that the other day how there's been so much use of pesticides that has decreased the insect population so badly i can remember as a kid yeah i'm a boomer so i've been around for a while and we literally would have to stop if we went on a longer trip several times to clean the windshield because you just couldn't see there was so much bug splatter and bugs have been well bugs i don't like the word bugs because bugs has the connotation they bug me uh, insects have been so reduced i mean so many things have been reduced with this, such crazy use of poisons for everything and poisons it's just masking the problem you have insects you have disease that's a problem but you're masking it by getting rid of the problem ah you know i get i get annoyed here's one of the autumn olives some people when i planted this commented hey that's an invasive it's a listen it's not invading too far we had a cold winter this last winter was cold i did a video on the chickens because we hit minus 34. so autumn olive here's the results after minus 34. if i open that i mean th that's yeah there's no green in that it froze everything above the snow line froze and now you can check see down here that was about the level of the snow or it was a little higher than that when we hit that cold temperature so the snow acted as a blanket the, tr the shrub isn't dead but it's died back basically to that point i wasn't sure that's why i didn't prune these out but this will all regrow from the base but all this above literally from there up everything is dead yep 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 uh, oh I passed the nursery I'll swing around and catch the nursery Whew. nice to see that rain was so needed go around those spider webs it was so needed A downy woodpecker there. Oh, this nest box fell down. I did say you can feel overwhelmed. Hey, if that happens, if you feel overwhelmed, there's a flicker. I say zoom in, zoom out. If you're overwhelmed, that's because you're zoomed right in on all the details, on all the things that need to be done. And you can feel overwhelmed because that's what you're focused on. Zoom out, step back, stop, take a cup of tea or coffee or whatever. And look at the big picture. Zoom back out and say, hey, wait a minute. What do I want to get done this year? What's, what's my goal this year? It's my goal to get more birds. You don't see that one on the post right here? There he goes. 
tree swallows are everywhere around here. We got, uh, we're counting regularly. Uh, we count about 25, and that's often just the ones. And when there's a hawk goes by, you get a double number. So it's around 50. And zoom out, as I'm saying, you're overwhelmed, zoom out. Take a look at the big picture. Don't look so focused at what, the one thing, this thing, that thing. Because it can, it can overwhelm you. It can literally, you can feel, oh, I, I, I can feel overwhelmed. Maybe some of you, even if you have capacity for work, it's not a question of being able to work. It's a question of getting everything done in the period. So sometimes when I do that and I look, okay, I wanted to do this. I won't be able to. It's not as important. It won't be able to get done this year. Let's move it to maybe the fall because that's another planting season or next year. And look at the next thing and just focus on what's really important towards your goal. What, what did you want to really achieve this year? This is bloom, re almost full bloom, a couple days. So that helps you not feel overwhelmed. The guards we put on last year, got somebody using this. Probably a skunk, I think. A skunk has been seen around here. I haven't seen a groundhog, which is the other one. And haven't, although yes, we have been seeing the fox, but that's not the fox. Uh, that's your planted out a whole lot of raspberries. They're just getting started. We just got the water on them last week because they're looking a little, a little dry here. Uh, oh, here. And we're up to here with, no, this isn't where we stopped. We've been putting wood chip mulch down, but that was last, Brown. that wasn't uh, that wasn't this spring the ones we got this spring done and here's another one we selected out the best we had two of our absolute best hazelnuts multiplied that Matsu did a big round last week uh, last year in the fall and amazing how well they took and geez you know people suggest I, I I kind of got a little annoyed this spring with looking at some of the some of the videos and 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 comments and and even just in books about here's how to plant and here you go ahead and you cut the roots and cut tops. No, I'll have to do a video on that on some of the myths because it's it's literally myths. It's just total BS because when you plant, you don't know what branch was attached to what root that got cut off. And so don't go doing that. Anyway, can't get annoyed by everything because it's a learning process. I think of it and I have to zoom out, right? Zoom in, zoom out. I have to look and say, hey, what did I know when I started? I didn't even know what a rootstock was. Got 10 caterpillars, look at that. I'm excited to see tent caterpillars. I want tent caterpillars. We did a video on that. They did a few of them. But if you don't know about it, just go to the channel homepage and that first video explains the story of how that caterpillar literally changed the orchard. Because thanks to that caterpillar, uh, I replanted this as a permaculture orchard. I'm just being caught by the jewels you see those jewels the way they're shining maybe you don't get the light the way it's you could see the light just on those drops ah, I can get excited about some small things uh, we raised these pipes and got this irrigation system all really going well last year yep yeah, that was a big plus rebuilding it basically here in the new seeded orchard so there's a whole there's a whole series on the seeded orchard all this is all replanted much wider this is double row spacing so it's 
it's actually 24 feet between the rows a lot more space we'll hopefully be able to graze this and and put bigger animals and so on i've been wanting to get back to having some sheep not this year but we'll hopefully do that in the coming years and this is going to be much easier to manage in here with a wider rose we did a big round or Matsu did a big round also of transplanting so here's cherries and and they're all in here they're just not that big let me get you some where we where we replanted even this spring some more plums uh, no that yeah that's yeah that's Mount Royal plum so they're all in here we added some instant wildlife habitat last year with Stefano and uh, so here are these brush piles if you ever you have an open area oh where did you go huh Well, it was sparrows using that box. So these, if ever you have a big open area and you have some brush, just put a few piles like this. I mean, we put four piles and literally in that same day, it transformed this area. All of a sudden, the birds really started to use it. These dead branches, that's just big branches that we just planted. We literally just planted branches. And because we were seeing we were seeing birds perched on our planting stakes and well that's an indication that they would definitely use this area more if they could perch higher and so having these higher points and it it just changed this area instantly in in a literally half a day a few hours uh it made this area so much more attractive to birds that's not birds that's motorcycle You like that? You had a big walk. Look how wet you are. Mosquitoes. Yes, it's mosquito season in the north. Boy, we got a shock the other day coming back here and having all the mosquitoes literally devour us. It was crazy. I, I wasn't expecting it so early. Uh, some of the small honey locust. So when we plant, we preferably plant in the fall. That's how they take the best. See, here's a little a young one. We'll come through and weed this a little bit or put some cardboard down and wood chips. And we got those, we got two big loads of wood chips, one down there at that end and one over here. So that will supply all this area all these and all that orchard that has no plastic mulch and we'll be able to mulch everything hopefully one good mulching at least for young trees like this this is the rest leftover of the hay bales that we rolled out and that's good but wood chips is actually better for trees so when you plant getting some mulch down and getting a stake and we just color coded so the ones that have no tape are the nitrogen fixers the ones with a uh, green tape like this would be pears because pears tend to be green and then we put blue for plums so there's green so then i know that oh look at that so here's one seedling pear tree that'll need a little weeding out and here's another seedling and they're doing really well like they've can i show you that they've literally grown by yeah two inches just the last two weeks week almost so they're gonna come up hopefully by the end of summer they'll be up maybe if they're up at least knee height that makes them so much easier to manage and if they go up then i know they'll go down and pears root really deep so that lake next door is basically a gravel pit that's been excavated below the water table so that's the water table level and the goal is here to get things like pear and the honey locust to root to the water table. They won't need irrigation. And once they hit that water table, boy, they, they just, they are no, not in lack of anything and they just get going. 
In this first row we started, we add, we're starting to add the shrubs. So we just took some that we had rooted, layered, and we're putting them out. So put black currant, red currant, and gooseberries. A little sunny for gooseberries, but we could leave grass around it. There is a uh, red currant. Red currant? No, black currant. Let's see if you're not sure. Red currant, I'm not sure even. If it's not sure, is it? Oh yeah, black currant. So just, you could just rub the leaves or, or even just touch them and smell them. And if you smell something kind of strong, then that's a black currant. Good little trick there to know. These plum trees, that's from Eric de la Dimise, uh, their nursery. Yeah, I've got a whole, I just bought a bundle of seedling plums because this is a seedling orchard. So we want variety, we want diversity and then added in the cherries. So this would be probably Juliet cherry. Uh, so yeah, they're starting up. It didn't work. It didn't work as intended when we first got it going and we put seeds down. Well, I wasn't expecting literally this year again. So we've had three springs since we put this in. We put it, the seeds down in the fall and we've had three springs that have been so dry that literally seeds of trees didn't have enough moisture to germinate. And this is dry here. I mean, it's nicer where we put the mulch, but let me show you. I mean, this hasn't been mowed here. This is just the soil and this is really sandy here. And it dries out within, yeah, it's already dry, just, just a little bit below the surface. So this dries out really, really fast here. That's why next door it's a sand and gravel pit because that's what it is. It's not topsoil here. It's pretty well sand and gravel, that's it. Black currant. Look at those little pear trees. So yeah, that's gonna start. That's gonna start. And we put more than one, so there's Here's three, there's two here and one there. The idea being, look, seedlings, if ever you're gonna put seedlings, just put more. You can always select out and you may be lucky enough to have, for example, one of the seedlings in the case of pears that actually gets fire blight. Well, that don't be mad at it, just, that's good. You put in more than one. Don't put one, put more than one because whichever one is not meant to survive there you don't want it to survive you don't want to have to baby your plants like why baby plants give them a start you put in trees those of you are putting in trees this year if you watch to this far you know and now i'll give you some tips put the trees in ideally in the fall you're asking a lot when you plant in the spring because the plant has to get established and you know, do everything it has to do. While in the fall, it has no leaves. It's not needing to get extra water. It's actually putting down most of its root growth in the fall. And then these little honey locusts, they're doing their, that's gonna really grow this year. And that's just, I mean, knee high. So put them in, give them mulch and keep the mulch for three years is kind of the minimum. Mulch just means don't let the grass overwhelm them. That's how we almost lost the first orchard. His, the grass was so well established and the trees were so small that the grass was higher than the trees and nothing grew. So you want to get it. Look, I came by and weeded this one and there it goes, it's off. See, that's a pear tree, a little bit of water Hopefully in the next two weeks, depending on the rains, we'll get this area, we'll get some irrigation lines out here and uh, get this going. The goal here on this orchard, we'll need a lot more shrubs, but the goal is to, we didn't start it that way. We we're just getting the trees out and we put in a few shrubs just to get, to get them started. But the goal will be to have the trees, one row in the middle, 
and have double rows of shrubs on each side, like a row on each side, about a meter apart, three feet apart. And so the goal will be to create um, shrub hedges with fruit trees coming out of them. I saw this in France, Evelyne Le Terme developed this. I don't know if she developed it, but she was using it and I love the technique. And a shout out to Evelyn. She's done an incredible job in Europe uh, promoting fruit tree diversity and also just ways of doing it that doesn't rely on spraying the heck out of things. So she would put in the row of trees and double row of hedge and there was zero weeding. You don't need herbicide because you're basically growing trees in a hedge. And then they would actually go through and they would clip the hedge uh, a meter off the ground. So that would allow a lot of the species in the hedge to still flower and fruit, but not, not grow into the trees. Love that technique. And it's incredible habitat because it's, um, the trees are basically mulched so that's good and the diversity of those plants makes that it's it really grows well really grows well i like that technique and that's what we're gonna hopefully do here lots of work lots of work zoom in zoom out hey if you pick up one thing from this walkabout that'll help you basically yeah relax about the season you know Yes, the season hits you. Sometimes it hits you hard, but you've got to learn to stop, relax, breathe, smell the plants. Yes, take time, take a moment, take a day. In 10 days, I'm off for a few days canoe camping. I haven't gone a good canoe camping ride in a while, so we're off for four days. That will be a nice, a nice break. And it'll be good for this season. That's important to keep, kind of keep your sanity at a very busy time of year. Whoa, right in that spider web. To keep your sanity at this time of year because you do need to take a day off. Hey, God created the earth in six days and he rested on the seventh. I don't care if you believe in that or not, but the principle is there. You work hard, go ahead, hit it hard, even you know, even you can do two or three weeks, but you need a break. You need a time to recharge your batteries or you will literally burn out. And I know because I've done it in the past and it's not good. Here's an example of this autumn olive. See that? That branch was under the snow, totally alive, doing well. And everything above I mean, that's completely, it bends and you think it's green. Uh, there ain't no green in there. It's brown and dead. So there you go. Not a risk of taking over here. Not a risk at all. Some of our little Korean pines, Pinus coriensis. Uh, we wanna get some pine nuts here. That's a long-term. Have short-term, have medium-term, and have long-term goals. That's definitely a long-term goal. We're getting a whole bunch of blueberries coming soon, at the end of the month. And here's some of our older blueberry plants. And we have multiplied some of our own. I just find it faster sometimes to just put in an order. I'm getting a couple of hundred. We need more blueberries, we need more raspberries, and we need more strawberries. Those are our basic fruit around here that people are used to eating. Gooseberries, people don't know very well about gooseberries. They certainly don't know much about currants. And some of you say, what? That's impossible. If you're from Europe, you go, currants? They don't know about currants? No, people here don't. They, most people don't know what to do with them. They're not familiar with them. And so currants, people aren't current on currants here. The cherries have started. They had a big bloom, so we'll see how that turns out. Should be a good cherry year. He even had some Nanking cherries 
we haven't done very well with nanking cherries so we'll see how that works I think and I've had comments of why would you put a cedar in your orchard well this is eastern white cedar those of you who are in country where you have um, eastern red cedar it's a juniper. Eastern red cedar is a juniper, and juniper is a host to apple cedar rust. But white cedar is not a host of anything. It's actually the host to a lot of birds and a lot of insects as they get bigger. So this is the middle of our orchard in the width. So from east, well, this way to that way, it's kind of the middle. So we put in this to be a bit more of a hedgerow. We're leaving these trees grow tall and this will these rows will be basically hedgerow trees and hedgerow rows let's go see that nursery that sears really worked hard on that and it's going to be it's going to be quite the quite the production coming out of here for a first start i mean it's it, some of you say well that's tiny well it's it's amazing what you can get out of a space this big so uh he's he's put in here we put cuttings of uh, mulberry and he's got some what's that what's that uh, that is i'm trying to think what's the name elderberry thank you that's what it is so elderberry uh, we put in all the cuttings. These were just cuttings in here, nothing rooted. And see how nicely they're coming? That's uh, uh, currants, elderberry, currants, and mulberries. Then a bunch of other things. Roses, uh, different hazelnuts. And on this side is, is the... Uh, rootstocks grafted and what's this one here bell mac so that's an apple bell mac i think these are uh, i think these are on semi-dwarf rootstock then grapes that's all cuttings of our grapes this is a technique we used with my first apprentice, Jean-Francois, who we got tired of weeding. And so we put in, this is silage plastic, recycled. And actually this plastic is now on its fourth use. Yes, fourth use. And it's used on paths. So this gets trafficked, it gets walked on, but it's so tough. And so we, we actually take a strip wider, bury these two edges so they're in about, uh, tr three or four inches pushed in then there is a bare patch of soil which we get a, if it's a single row it gets a single slit if it's double if it's cuttings then it gets a double slit opening we plant the plants or plant the cuttings and then we just come in from both sides and we put in the wood chips and we've done several nurseries now and this is absolutely the easiest way. Like this, this, or, this nursery here, it'll need one weeding and maybe a chipping. Just putting up so a little bit more chips somewhere in about a month because the grass doesn't want to give up. This was pure sod here uh, two weeks ago. So yeah, grass doesn't give up that easily. But this is the technique that we found that works, that works to get things going. And yeah it's what i like a lot about it was that see it rained so you have little puddles but you literally can work here in the nursery just after a rain and it's like this all season long and as these trees start to pop then yeah you'll have you'll be able to do anything you need to do in here with great access the watering is the sprinklers there so you could do that way or you could put uh, I think we have done yeah we did do it with soaker hose so you could if you have a smaller nursery space or even this you put a main line here 
and then you'd put uh, plumb in sprinkler uh, soaker hoses for each row and that would work well too sprinklers just it was here this system of putting in sprinklers so we have one row there sprinkler and one row here and they overlap in the middle so everything here gets watered and we watered the heck out of it well we watered them in properly uh, last week because yeah it was so dry and so hot some of you out west you say dry you don't know what dry is well you got to put context specific for us in this climate when we get three weeks of no rain that's kind of unusual when we get six weeks sometimes and that's really unusual but it happens and it happened last well this is last year was a really dry spring which made that we didn't have to focus at all on spraying almost uh, we do a little bit of sprays i should have sprayed before this rain but you know what that's one of the things the crop is not going to be that big this year last year was a record crop and so hey even if we don't spray or we spray we're going to make some compost tea spray with that and then get some whey uh, hopefully in a few, couple weeks and then we'll spray with that go see those videos we haven't done one on compost tea i guess i will have to and that's the yeah that's that's the way it works this has been a long one maybe a bit winded for some of you but you know what it gives you a look of how things are doing this is our really low maintenance vegetable beds which we now put in to be strawberry beds so we put in strawberry plants and they like getting watered they were finding it very hot in this black plastic garlic patch here Freaking really nice I mean this is great shout out to Frank Tootin it was his technique that I've continued uh, just plant your garlic in the fall mulch the heck out of it in leaves in fact I had to come in and unearth some of these um, some of these garlic because I would put so much leaves that they were smothering the bulbs but just to give you an idea look at this see there's still leaves in there still leaves in there still leaves and there's the soil so we got this is shredded leaves wetted and there's two inches of leaves so with this technique you plant in the fall you mulch and we don't touch this bed we may come in and do a little spot weeding and that's it and then harvest the garlic in july so i like i like easy maintenance i don't like to be bogged down with gee you gotta do every week look we got big enough area we don't want to have to be dealing with weekly maintenance in that sense so those things just they don't get done uh, it's the, really the focus is on getting the perennial crops in oh talking about perennial crops the asparagus asparagus has been just we're tired of it <laughs> we literally let it go now because it's there's only so much asparagus you want to eat after a while you're just done with it so this patch we've got the chickens down there in the asparagus and here i just didn't put the chickens in here but i mean that is that is asparagus like that's i have big fingers and that's a big asparagus spear so those of you who have never tried this fresh out of the garden just crack it and mm. You say, no, you have, you have to cook your asparagus. Look, raw asparagus. Oh, my. This is the way to eat them. Crunchy, very, very juicy. Literally, can you see that? Uh, I mean, it's almost dripping water out of it. It's not dry at all because plus it rained, plus I'm watering this bed. So this asparagus is getting all it needs. And you can continue to harvest asparagus 
So we'll let, see this one's leafing out. That one's gonna leaf out. If you leave out of your patch, one or two go up and, and basically flower, then you can continue to come back at the base and harvest. You'll have still shoots coming up because this is an older clump. It would put out more than two stems. So it will still keep sending. And these two will feed a future collection. But as it gets warmer, you'll have to harvest more and more. And that's where it just gets, like once you're tired of asparagus, you say, how can you be tired of asparagus? Well, if you eat it <laughs> five times a week, you will get tired of it. And there's one that we had a frost round. And here's one. We had two, actually we had three nights of frost just so these frosted you see those both of those frosted so they go flat there they just they froze so asparagus can freeze and they're tender to frost so those go and then you know the roots are able to supply quite a quite a bit more than that so that's a trick how you can get asparagus to grow and continue same thing here See, that one froze. It's not colored right. And here's another one coming up. And here's two that we harvested. And here's, <laughs> I mean, that is, that's serious asparagus. That will grow to seven feet, that stalk. And so, yeah, this will become all asparagus. Our grape collection here on the trellis did a good job of getting it pruned and trained and this is a wild grape the first one and the chickens wintered in the greenhouse they did well now uh, hopefully next week or yeah next week we'll be putting in our our tomatoes peppers and cucumbers in there so the good way to use a structure multi-season use the greenhouse as a chicken shelter that worked really well the chickens have done extremely well we've been getting almost 100 percent eggs a day so they've done well our little where'd you go i know somebody just jumped at my feet uh, our little pond has been doing really well we do add water because it's been so dry we literally have capillary action in the the ground around just sucks the water out of the pond. So we've had to water because this is basically sub-irrigates this whole area around here. But it's been nice. Lots of frogs have moved in. We had a snapping turtle. Hey, if you're interested at all in the master class, keep aware it will be, we're gonna have a beta test group if you're really yeah, I would say you'd have to be really an Arkeen fans and uh, and doing we need people to beta test the master class soon because we want to do final touches and it's not yet we'll have it our goal is in August it'll be beta testers then then we'll have it open uh, throughout the, the fall so that's the target late summer early fall uh, end the fall and then we should have that out I know many people have been waiting and wanting to be notified it's one of the things but we our focus this summer has been on the master class because that's once that's out of the way then that will be a big step done big step done those of you who are new subscribers if you watch to this far please Put a comment saying yeah i'm a new subscriber and i watched your whole walkabout because these can be long those of you who like it look i know you're gonna watch them because it's always good to see what's going on but if you're new welcome aboard there's so much to binge watch i mean gee i i have over 200 videos now a lot of them give you all kinds of tips and techniques if you're looking at fruit trees, if you're looking at even some gardening, if you're looking even how the whole system can work, 
even the occasional rant on things that really disturb me, but there isn't that many of those. Take a look at some of the old videos. They're not old, they're just older than this one. Ah, now it's gonna be a start to the day. This was an early start, they're always early starts. I've got my binoculars. I did my bit of bird watching already this morning just to familiarize myself with what's here today. Enjoy your spring. This is, this is the time to, I mean, there's always a time to enjoy, but enjoy the spring. Remember to zoom in, which you probably have been doing, but zoom out. That's my one lesson for today. Zoom in, zoom out, and it will help get over that feeling of desperation or overwhelmed and the black flies are starting and mosquito season is starting enjoy the bugs enjoy the birds enjoy the blooms enjoy your season thanks for watching